Good afternoon. I'm Recruiting Officer Mr. Keith Carble, and on behalf of the Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew F. Ignatovic, and the officers, non-commissioned officers, honorary guests, staff members, and cadets of the Dauntless Battalion, welcome to the 2016 Army ROTC Commissioning Ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem sung by Keeping It Trill a cappella group, and please remain standing for the recitation of the Soldier's Creed by Cadet Alexander McCarthy. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, where so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior's tasks and drills. I'm an expert and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I'm a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Please take a short moment for an individual period of reflection. Please be seated. Today we will commission a total of 16 cadets from Widener, Newman, Penn State Abington, Villanova, and Westchester Universities. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to present Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Ignatovic, the Professor of Military Science. Major General Crawford, Mrs. Crawford, Ms. Linda Durant, Provost Wilhite, friends, family, guests, alumni, and soon to be commissionees, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm a little sad and disappointed 
because it's not raining and blowing sideways and snowy and, and they know they know what we're talking about you know it's uh it's always a lot easier to lead when the weather is great and nice and comfortable but you know when it's when the going gets tough and it's raining sideways and it's snowing and and we get to really see the true character of a person come out and the ability to lead in those conditions and complete the Norwegian foot march and complete the tough mudder and the Spartan races and you know, still be challenged with the academics uh, that are put on them and still bring it in terms of a total scholar, athlete, and leader. Those qualifiers that we looked at and their potential even back uh, when you sadly said a goodbye and you know, they decided to go on this all-volunteer all service and, and do this thing that we call the Army. Uh, and then they came to us, and then they started getting molded and shaped and focusing on still all those th same things between being a scholar, athlete, and leader. And, you know, it's been said, you know, that ROTC is almost like a double major. You know, the, the requirements that really pull from an individual, you know, when their peers are still sleeping in in the morning and they have to get up and do PT, you know, that, that's hard. And it's, it's really a marathon you know, for most of them over four years. And then as they commission for the rest of their life, you know, it is a profession and a lifestyle. It is not a sprint. And how we continue to steward the profession and represent our nation with pride, even when we get out uh, after four years or for those of us after our retire, are we still stewarding our profession? Are we still representing our nation with pride and doing the right thing out there? So. It, it, it's bittersweet for me, as this is my last commissioning class, uh, and uh, I would be, you know, I would be without words to share with you that it's been truly a rewarding uh, experience for me. There is no greater joy than to take an individual and see them as they transition from being educated and led to educating and leading in others. And this is a, another fine class, my last class that will always uh, stick in my memory banks for, for many, many years to come. Um, I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank the parents here uh, for allowing your nation uh, to have them as leaders. We need them. We absolutely need them. We have challenges ahead, and um, I'm, I'm proud to serve with them and proud to represent this nation with pride. Having said that, let's get on to more important things with... Um, I'd like to introduce Major General Crawford. He has had a long and distinguished career and continues to serve uh, our nation with pride. He is a uh, former signal officer before he became a general officer. And uh, I, I wish we had some more signal officers. We do have one branch detailed. The floor is out there, raise your hand. And uh, he's gonna be an infantryman for a little while but before he, he moves on to a uh, bigger and better and, and uh, changes over to the signal branch. He is a South Carolina State uh, University grad, and we're proud to have him today. He's uh, served for 29 years of service, and he continues to serve. Uh, please refer to your bio for a reflection and, and uh, to look at his long, illustrious career. Sir, uh, it's our honor to have you today. Thank you for joining us today. Please come forward. Well, good afternoon to all. It's always interesting when you hear the uh, words long and distinguished. You know what he's really trying to say. <laughs> uh, well, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction and what I consider to be an actually a warm day and a warm welcome uh, to the city of Chester. Uh, my wife Diane and I have not had the opportunity to visit here, but I understand the shopping and antiques are good, so look for us again uh, to be making a return visit. I must say that uh, actually, as uh, Diane often does, and uh, having been my bride for almost 30 years, uh, this morning, as we were getting ready to leave, she lovingly passed on a few words of encouragement to me on the delivery of my speech, having uh, heard me speak uh, many times before. What she did was uh, she reminded me uh, that I was going to the great state of Pennsylvania, home of the Gettysburg uh, Address. Additionally, that uh, in his address that President Lincoln uh, used just 272 words and under three minutes to deliver that address. 
Her final reminder, as you could imagine, was you, sir, looking deeply into my eyes, are no Abraham Lincoln. Uh, so uh, be quick with your speech. Sir, so after 30 years of marriage, uh, I've, learned, I've learned nothing else. I've learned how to follow orders. So I will try to get uh, through this as quickly as I can. Well, Senior Vice President Durant, members of the Norwegian Consult, uh, faculty and administrators, uh, Dauntless Battalion alumni, ROTC cadets, and cadets, uh, families and friends of Widener, Villanova, Westchester, Penn State Abington, and Newman Universities. I'm especially thankful that you allowed me the honor, and truly, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor, uh, to share in such a memorable event in the lives of you your citizens, and your families. I must say uh, that this month, and he mentioned that I had 29 years of service, I must say that this month, and particularly this week in May of 2016, has a special meaning to me and my family. As this uh, week marks 30 years uh, since I was commissioned at the ROTC at South Carolina State back in 1986. Now for you young people here in the audience, I know what you're thinking. I can see it uh, on your faces. So I can confirm, standing here today, that yes, that was a long time ago. Before there was the internet, believe it or not. But also, uh, you know, before there was fire, before there was water or air, all right? Back when it was hard. But I digress a little. So having said all of this, in addition to the honor of participating in your special day, uh, this week, and to be totally honest, this visit to Chester will be something I will never forget, given this is the very first commissioning ceremony that I've had the honor of doing uh, since I reached my 30-year anniversary. So once again, thank you very much for your hospitality, uh, for the welcome here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, over the years, I've made it a point never to speak publicly without recognizing another group that I'm sure is represented here today, this afternoon. There are almost one million in the great state of Pennsylvania, and this county alone has almost 30,000. In the Army, we call them soldiers for life. These, of course, are veterans of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Now, I know that this is not a part of the program, but I'd like to ask our veterans, just do me just this one favor. I'd like to ask our veterans to please stand and be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, those who stood, uh, you could make the argument that because they serve, uh, they're the very foundation on which this nation was built. So I thank you personally uh, as a soldier uh, for your service. As the oldest city in Pennsylvania, in addition to being the home of the cadets of the Dauntless Battalion, who we celebrate and honor today, uh, this group of universities also boasts some very proud alumni, including, among those, our current Acting Secretary of the Army, uh, the Honorable Patrick Murphy, who is charged with leading the 1.4 million men and women who support and serve our beloved Army each and every day. But I'm also told that other than its amazing citizens, uh, that the real secret sauce, all right, the big secret, uh, but the secret sauce for this great community is that it's the true home of the famous and world-renowned hoagie sandwich. <laughs> now, I have a tasker from Diane, since we talked about this on the way up here, to uh, actually make a stop. So if anybody has any advice on where I can get a hoagie, uh, please see me after this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I must say that other than my wife and our two sons, one of whom is an ROTC graduate and currently serves on active duty uh, as a commission officer in the Army, the one thing that I am most proud of is that I'm counted, that I am personally counted among the ranks of the over 600,000 men and women who have been commissioned via the Reserve Officer Training Course, ROTC, uh, over the 100, last 100 years. After 30 years of service, it's very clear to me that much of what I learned about people, much of what I learned about pride, and much of what I learned about the honor that comes with service, I learned as a student and ROTC cadet at uh, South Carolina State University in a small town much like this one in Orangeburg, South Carolina. 
I'd like to once again uh, thank Ms. Durant, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, I've given him a new name. His new name is Iggy now. Uh, and the administrators and faculty for allowing me the opportunity and the privilege to share in this great day of your institutions. It's obvious to me, and I had the opportunity to speak uh, with our soon-to-be uh, second lieutenants a little bit earlier, but it's obvious to me uh, from meeting with the commissionees earlier how significant the faculty and ca uh, cadre leadership is to the Dauntless Battalion and the importance of your contributions in developing these 16 great Americans and these 16 future leaders of our nation. As your collective mission and vision statement attests, it's evident through meeting these young men and women that you've truly inspired your students to be citizens of character. Uh, you have produced dynamic young leaders and trusted professionals who are actively contributing to the vitality and well-being of not just our local communities, but to the absolute strength of this great nation. To the administrators and faculties of these five institutions, it cannot be overstated. And trust me, I do a lot of ROTC engagements and investing in our youth, but it cannot be overstated how important your passion for education and your support and advocacy for your ROTC programs are and will continue to be in this ever-evolving, complex world. I often think about uh, the leaders in my uh, own life and I'm sure that it's more than just a coincidence that most of those leaders are also educators. Having said this, I have a special place uh, in my heart uh, for our nation's educators, and not just because I happen to be married to one sitting on the front row here. To our educators, and uh, again, these are those who come in early and stay late, not for money or personal recognition, but simply because they happen to care. So to the faculty in attendance today, from the classroom to the boardroom, you are clearly making a difference. Now, I won't ma ask many things of this audience today, but I will ask uh, you to indulge me with a round of applause for the faculty and for the educators of these great Americans and their contributions. <laughs> well, contrary to popular belief, uh, you would think the most important people here today are the commissionees sitting before you to my left. Uh, but uh, in my humble opinion, and uh, I tend to stress my opinion from now, you know, every now and then, but in my humble opinion, although they have and will continue to accomplish great things, you can make the argument that the most important people here today are all of you, not just the 16 that are about to be commissioned. The fathers, the mothers, the grandparents, the siblings, the spouses, significant others, and supporters of these young men and women who have gotten them to where they are today. In the end, you were there from the beginning, when a day like today was just a dream, just something that they were thinking about doing. Your inspiration and your support during the first chapter is what makes the next chapter in their lives actually possible. Now, I've heard that Widener University is the alma mater of the great Cecil B. DeMille, uh, the father of Hollywood and modern film. With that in mind, I wanted to briefly quote another uh, pretty famous Hollywood director by the name of Steven Spielberg, who said something pretty interesting uh, when he came to support and when he came to mentorship. And uh, I quote, the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves, unquote. So on behalf of your United States Army, I wanted to offer my heartfelt thanks to you, the families and friends of our soon-to-be commissioned officers and future leaders, because I know that the amazing efforts of these fine young individuals pales in comparison to the love, to the sacrifices, and the unrelenting support you've given them over the years. And finally, I'd like to offer my heartfelt congratulations to the 2016 Dauntless Battalion uh, ROTC commissionees. To those of you, and I've uh, had the opportunity to look at your majors and different honors uh, that you've received, but to those of you who received honors, awards, and distinctions, I say job well done. However, just in case, and to those C students in attendance today, I say to you, fear not for standing here before you delivering this speech is living proof that there is life for C students after college and potentially a, a job. 
Ladies and gentlemen, again, it's my honor to be here with you speaking uh, to the legacy that you're now a part of, the Reserve Officer Training Corps, and that's 100 years of enduring excellence. I know your cadre and alumni have made sure all are astutely aware, keenly aware, uh, but 100 years ago, uh, the ROTC program was born to this great nation. And similar to where we stand today, uh, the establishment of this program was created to enable readiness. And that's readiness of a, a nation, which is also similar today, facing an unfamiliar enemy in uncertain times. What is significant is the word spoken by then President Woodrow Wilson when addressing Congress about the task facing the nation in 1917, just after ROTC uh, was started. Uh, those words uh, remain as true and as accurate today as they did back then. And I quote, as shall bring peace and safety to all nations and make the world itself at last free. Now let's take a brief moment and think about that one more time. The words make the world itself at last free. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a daunting task to place on the shoulders of America's sons and daughters, our young college graduates, our future leaders. But that's how much the institution, your United States Army, the American people, believe and invest in each of you. They invest in your training, believing in your resiliency and your ability to lead as the next greatest generation. What you're doing now as cadets is the premier pathway to what is year in and year out considered the most trusted and most respected profession on earth, and that is being a soldier in the United States Army. While this is an incredible and honorable opportunity uh, to lead, take note that with this opportunity, uh, you also accept a tremendous responsibility, and we had an opportunity to talk about that a little bit earlier. That responsibility is to live up to the ideals, to the values, to the legacy of those who came before you. Never allow yourself during your time wearing the uniform uh, to forget that or to ever take that for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, it is against the backdrop of this profession and the responsibilities our nation entrusts you with that I offer a few additional thoughts. I'll start by telling you that I am honored and blessed with the opportunity on a daily basis and the responsibility for over 30,000 employees and their families stationed around the world. But the second thing that I'll tell you is that as a senior leader in uniform, I have no more greater job, no more greater responsibility than investing in your future and in the development of the next generation of leaders. Keep in mind that in a few minutes, uh, you will enter the ranks of our nation's most trusted profession. If you don't believe me that you're the nation's most trusted profession, tomorrow morning, put your uniform on and go into a public place and see how many people are going to be breaking their arms and breaking their necks to try to get to you just to shake your hand and utter those five words, thank you for your service. What makes you different and what separates you from every other profession? Not only and not just that you chose a profession that prides itself on words like loyalty, words like duty, words like respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage as a part of the moral fiber that makes up its fabric. Not that you will graduate from a program that provides leadership and experiences that will resonate throughout your lifetime. Not even the fact that you will soon be part of an elite fraternity alongside notable alumni like former Secretary of State Colin Powell and retired four-star general and graduate of what was then Pennsylvania Military College in 1963, uh, General John Tulley. In my opinion, what separates you from every other profession, that is, given the choice, you are making the choice to serve. Once again, what separates you, that given the choice, you are making the choice to serve that given many other options, you're choosing to become a part of the only 1% who wear the cloth of the nation as a member of the profession of arms. The 1% who carry on the legacy of the many who have come before them. The 1% who not only swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, 
but also the 1% who in many cases sacrifice to defend those who cannot defend themselves around the world. So on behalf of all who are here today, your family, your mentors, your faculty, and a very grateful nation, allow me to say that I am so proud as a senior leader in the Army of you for the choices that you have made, and to be quite honest with you, I'm envious that the, of the journey that awaits you. Your next steps have the potential to define your generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your patience today, but before I close, a couple of final thoughts. To our future leaders, I say to you, if you want to be good, then just work harder, try harder. But if you want to make a difference, I offer the following for your consideration. I know that with this tremendous opportunity comes some anxiety, and to be quite honest with you, some doubt as to whether or not you are ready. That at some point in the next few days, during a private moment, you will wonder quietly if you are up to the task. My advice to you is to never forget, to quote my current boss uh, and one of the senior leaders in our Army, General Dennis Bai, that leading is a privilege. Never allow yourself to forget that. That like no other profession, your Army will entrust you with a tremendous responsibility. And that responsibility is the well-being of its most valuable resource, the lives of its sons and daughters. As young 20-something-year-old second lieutenants, on day one, on day one, you will have in your hands the lives, the development, and most importantly, the trust of up to 40 soldiers and that of their families. I submit to you that I'm confident, I'm very confident and I'm a believer that you are ready. Everything that you have done up to this day has prepared you for this moment. Be confident in who you are, and what you stand for. But never forget that ultimately you are in the people business. You will have many things to be responsible for, but ultimately you are in the people business. That this journey can never, ever, ever be about you. Regardless of whether or not you decide to make, ser make service in the military a career, or you decide to get out and go discover the next iPad or iPhone and make a billion dollars, Never take for granted what an honor, what an absolute honor and privilege it is to lead. In closing, I want to remind you that only you can determine success, regardless of your chosen career path and how long you stay in the military. In this audience, it is likely, as it was for me some 30 years ago, that one of you might find yourself in 2046, exactly where I am right now, giving advice to the next generation. I can tell you that it has been my honor and privilege to wear the claws of the nation and to quote an excerpt from the oath of office that you will soon execute in just a few short minutes, defend her against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Those 73 words from the oath of office alone will not make you a professional. What truly makes you a professional is your enduring commitment to the true meaning of those 73 words. Never forget that. And that's not just when times are good, but also when you're challenged with making difficult decisions. Understand and digest the true meaning of those 73 words. My final ask of each of you on this day of your commissioning is as you find yourself uttering those 73 words of our oath of office in a few minutes, take a moment to think about all of those who spoke it before you. Think of them as you stand proudly before your friends, you stand proudly before your families, and you stand proudly before those who have sacrificed so much to get you to where you are today. The 600,000 officers that our ROTC has commissioned throughout its proud history. From the heart of a soldier, I can attest that there are no truer, more honest words to be spoken of our profession. I'm honored to welcome you into our ranks today. Thank you all for the gift of your time. On behalf of my wife, Diane, and I, it's truly been our pleasure to have been asked to participate in this time-honored tradition of welcoming the next greatest generation of leaders of this great nation. Thank you all very much.
Oh, it's great. It's just blowing sideways. It's excellent. It's challenging. <laughs> Sir, on, on, behalf of, on behalf of a grateful class, commissioning a dauntless class of 2016, as well as our cadre, our faculty, and, and even one of our international brothers, the, uh, we're graced with the honorary consul to Norway, Eric Torp, and our continued partnership with them. Their consul office is in uh, Philadelphia, and we do an annual foot march. And, and earn something as part of that little foot march with them. Uh, we have a, a, a gift for you, sir. And uh, although we're in the greater Philadelphia area in recognition, especially uh, in the pursuit of life, liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness, uh, our, our bell of freedom uh, for speaking and joining us today, sir. If you can come forward. Cadets will now rise and move forward to recite the commissioning oath of office administered by a military officer. At this time, those who have been asked to administer the oath will come forward and stand in front of their cadet. The commissionees may return to their seats. Each newly commissioned officer will now be called forward individually for the traditional pinning on of the gold bars representing their new rank of second lieutenant and for the first salute with a non-commissioned officer. For those of you who have been invited to assist with the pinning on of rank should come forward as soon as their lieutenant's name is called. Families may feel free to move forward and take photographs at any time during this. Our first commissioned officer is second lieutenant John D. Anden. Lieutenant Anden is a distinguished military graduate from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and minors in history and military science. He will enter the Army as a branch detailed field artillery officer before transitioning to a military intelligence officer. As a cadet, he completed the cadet leader's course at Fort Knox, Kentucky, earned his air assault wings. During his senior year, he served as the Cadet Battalion S3 and S-4. He will begin active duty at the Artillery Basic Officer Leader Course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, followed by an assignment with the 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team, 1st Infantry Division, Fort Riley, Kansas. Lieutenant
Lieutenant Anden had his rank pinned on by his parents, Michael and Naomi Anden, and brother Peter. <laughs> Lieutenant Anden will now receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Robert George. One tradition associated with the hand salute has withstood the test of time. The tradition is a newly appointed officer given a silver dollar to the first enlisted person to salute him after he has received his commission. The exact origin of this custom is arguable. Researchers suggest that it came from the British regiments stationed in colonial America. They brought with them a number of customs and traditions that were retained by the newly formed American units. For example, newly commissioned British officers were assigned an enlisted soldier to train them, teach them the regiment's history and traditions, and ensure the officers' kit, dress, and field uniforms and personal equipment were serviceable at all times. Grateful lieutenants often showed their heartfelt gratitude by informally compensating the enlisted man with a small sum of money. This custom continued to grow within the British military and newly formed American units. American second lieutenants in 1816 received a monthly base pay of $25, a $3 ration allowance, and $1 for an enlisted advisor. The advisor's pay was later discontinued, but the responsibility for teaching the newly commissioned officer continued. The present day tradition is thought to have its roots in this relationship. The silver dollar is traditionally the only coin given in exchange for the first salute. The coin represents more than a dollar in currency. To every new officer, it represents a special significance, the symbolic receipt of respect due a newly earned rank and position. Congratulations, Lieutenant Anden. Second Lieutenant Peter G. Arend. Lieutenant Arend is a distinguished military graduate from Westchester University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history. He will enter the Army as a branch detailed infantry officer before transitioning to a military intelligence officer. He is a prior service combat infantry staff sergeant. As a cadet, he completed the cadet leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky and earned his air assault wings at Fort Drum, New York. During his senior year, he served as the cadet battalion executive officer and Delta Company first sergeant. He will begin active duty at the infantry officer basic course at Fort Benning, Georgia with his follow on assignment at Fort Carson, Colorado. Lieutenant Arend is having his rank pinned on by his parents, Gary and Joanne Arend. Lieutenant Aaron will now receive his first salute from friend Sergeant First Class Timothy Taylor. Congratulations, Lieutenant Aaron. Second Lieutenant Beverly A. Cleary. Lieutenant Cleary is a graduate from Newman University with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. She is assigned to the U.S. Army Reserve as an Army Nurse Corps officer. As a cadet, she attended Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency in Romania, completed the Cadet Leaders Course at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and the Nurse Summer Training Program at Madigan Army Medical Center, Joint Base Lewis-McChord, Washington. During her senior year, she served as the Cadet Battalion S-4 and Alpha Company First Sergeant. She will attend the Army Medical Department Basic Officer Leader Course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Lieutenant Cleary's rank was pinned on by her mother, Colonel Patricia Tuggle, and boyfriend, First Lieutenant John Pauling. Lieutenant Cleary will now receive her first salute from friend Sergeant Alessia Triker. Congratulations, Lieutenant Cleary. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Michael C. Collins, Jr. Lieutenant Collins is a distinguished military graduate from Penn State University, Abington, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Administration of Justice and a minor in Military Studies. He will enter the Army as an infantry officer. 
As a cadet, he attended cultural understanding and language proficiency in the Democratic Republic of Congo and completed the cadet leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the cadet battalion commander and the Bravo Company first sergeant. He will begin active duty at the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Benning, Georgia, with a follow-on assignment at Fort Carson, Colorado. Lieutenant Collins is having his rank pinned on by his parents, Eileen and Michael Collins. Lieutenant Collins will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Retired Jason Seberger. Congratulations, Lieutenant Collins. Second Lieutenant Lloyd A. Flores. Lieutenant Flores is a distinguished military graduate from Widener University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Political Science. He will enter the Army as a Branch Detailed Infantry Officer before transitioning to a Signal Corps Officer. As a cadet, he completed the Cadet Leaders Course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Cadet Battalion Command Sergeant Major and the Alpha Company Commander. He will begin active duty at the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Benning, Georgia, with a follow-on assignment yet to be determined. Lieutenant Flores had his rank pinned on by his Father, Mr. Lloyd Flores, and Mother, Ms. Kimberly Morris Flores. Lieutenant Flores will now receive his first salute from Sergeant First Class Christopher Curtis. Congratulations, Lieutenant Flores. Second Lieutenant Kevin J. Hamilton. Lieutenant Hamilton is a graduate from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics and a minor in Military Science. He will enter the Massachusetts Army National Guard as a field artillery officer. As a cadet, he attended cultural understanding and language proficiency in Germany and completed the cadet leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Battalion Public Affairs Officer and S2. He will, end, he will end, <clears throat> attend the Artillery Basic Officer Leader Course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Lieutenant Hamilton had his rank pinned on by his parents, Douglas and Susan Hamilton. Lieutenant Hamilton will now receive his first salute from Sergeant First Class Christopher Curtis. Congratulations, Lieutenant Hamilton. Second Lieutenant Jeffrey B. Heilman. Lieutenant Heilman is a valedictorian graduate from Penn State University, Abington, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Letters in Arts and Sciences. He is a prior service combat infantry sergeant first class and drill sergeant of the year. During his senior year, he served as the Bravo Company first sergeant and the battalion executive officer. His branch and future assignment will be determined on the August Special Assessions Board following the cadet leader's course. Lieutenant Heilman is having his rank pinned on by his brother, Staff Sergeant Retired Gregory Heilman. He's now receiving his first salute from his brother, Staff Sergeant Retired Gregory Heilman. Congratulations, Lieutenant Heilman. Second Lieutenant Christopher J. Herbert. Lieutenant Herbert is a graduate from Westchester University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Finance. He will serve in the Pennsylvania Army National Guard as a Quartermaster Officer with the 628th Aviation Support Battalion, 28th Combat Aviation Brigade, Fort Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. As a cadet, he completed the Cadet Leaders Course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Delta Company Public Affairs Officer and the Delta Company Commander. He will attend the Quartermaster Basic Officer Leader Course at Fort Lee, Virginia. 
Lieutenant Herbert had his rank pinned on by his parents, Richard and Sue Herbert, and girlfriend, Madeline Hawks. Lieutenant Herbert will now receive his first salute from his friend, Sergeant Michael Picard. Congratulations, Lieutenant Herbert. Second Lieutenant Michael Nicholas Killian. Lieutenant Killian is a graduate from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics and minors in Italian and Military Science. He will enter the Army as an Engineer Corps officer. As a cadet, he completed the, leader, the Cadet Leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky and attended Cadet Troop Leader training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. During his senior year, he served as the Bravo Company XO and Bravo Company Public Affairs Officer. He will enter active duty at the Engineer Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, with the following assignment yet to be determined. Lieutenant Killian had his rank pinned on by his brother Matthew and friend Rene Vidal. Lieutenant Killian will now receive his first salute from friend Specialist Redmond Self. Congratulations, Lieutenant Killian. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Angelique Matutz. Lieutenant Matutz graduates from Widener University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Nursing and a Bachelor of Arts degree in French. She will enter the Army as a Nurse Corps officer. As a cadet, she attended Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency in Tanzania and completed the Leader Development and Assessment course at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and the Nurse Summer Training Program at Tripler Army Medical Center, Honolulu, Hawaii. She will attend the Army Medical Department Officer Leaders course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, and her follow-on assignment is yet to be determined. Lieutenant Matutz is having a rank pinned on by her parents, John and Danielle Matutz, grandfather Richard Latuga, and sister Cadet Felicia Matutz. Lieutenant Matutz will now have her first salute from her father, former Staff Sergeant John Matutz. Congratulations, Lieutenant Matutz. Second Lieutenant Colleen E. Perrin. Lieutenant Perrin is a graduate from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with minors in Communication and Military Science. She will enter the Army as an Adjutant General Corps Officer. As a cadet, she attended Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency in Senegal and completed both the Cadet Initial Entry Training and Cadet Leaders courses at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During her senior year, she served as the Battalion S-1 Officer and the Bravo Company Commander. She begins active duty at the Adjutant General Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, with a follow-on assignment at Joint Base lewis McCord, Washington. Lieutenant Perrin had her rank pinned on by her father, Major Retired Patrick Perrin, and Grandfather Captain Retired David Perrin. Lieutenant Perrin will now receive her first salute from Master Sergeant Retired Jason Seberger. Congratulations, Lieutenant Perrin. Second Lieutenant Jonathan R. Chavor. Lieutenant Chavor is graduating from Widener University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. He will enter the Army Reserve as a military intelligence officer with the 378th MI Battalion, Blackwood, New Jersey. As a cadet, he completed the Leader Development and Assessment course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Alpha Company First Sergeant and Battalion S-4 Officer. He will attend the Military Intelligence Basic Officer Leader course at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. 
Lieutenant Chavour is having his rank pinned on by his parents, Brian and Kimberly Chavour. Lieutenant Chavour will now receive his first salute from Sergeant First Class Christopher Curtis. Congratulations, Lieutenant Chavour. Second Lieutenant John M. Sinclair. Lieutenant Sinclair is graduating from Widener University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. He will enter the Army as an Engineer Corps Officer. As a cadet, he attended Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency in Thailand and served as a trainer at the Cadet Initial Entry Training and completed the Cadet Leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Cadet Battalion S2 Officer and the Alpha Company Public Affairs Officer. He will attend, enter active duty at the Engineer Basic Officer Leaders Course, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, with a follow-on assignment yet to be determined. Lieutenant Sinclair is rank pinned on by his parents, Nicholas and Maria Sinclair. Lieutenant Sinclair will now receive his first salute from his grandfather, former Corporal Alfred Albano. Congratulations, Lieutenant Sinclair. Second Lieutenant Tamisha L. Taylor. Lieutenant Taylor is a graduate from Villanova University with a Master of Arts in Public Administration degree and certification in nonprofit management. She will serve in the Army Reserve as a Medical Service Corps officer. She's a prior service Staff Sergeant Military Intelligence Interrogator. As a cadet, she completed the Cadet Leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. And during her senior year, she served as the Bravo Company Public Affairs Officer and the Bravo Company XO. She will attend the Army Medical Department Basic Officer Leader Course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Lieutenant Taylor will have her rank pinned on by her father, Timothy Baldon, stepmother, Melissa Baldon, and husband, Second Lieutenant William Taylor, USMC. Lieutenant Taylor will receive her first salute from her company first sergeant, First Sergeant Jason Smith. Congratulations, Lieutenant Taylor. Second Lieutenant Brian T. Whitehouse. Lieutenant Whitehouse is a distinguished military graduate from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. He will enter the Army as an Engineer Corps Officer. As a cadet, he attended Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency in Bosnia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Cadet Troop Leader Training at Fort Riley, Kansas, and completed the Cadet Leaders Course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. During his senior year, he served as the Bravo Company Commander and the Cadet Battalion S3 Officer. He will begin active duty at the Engineer Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, with a follow-on assignment with the 2nd Engineer Brigade, Fort Richardson, Alaska. Lieutenant Whitehouse had his rank pinned on by his girlfriend, Navy Lieutenant Retired Kara Albright. Lieutenant Whitehouse will now receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Retired Jason Seberger. Congratulations, Lieutenant Whitehouse. Second Lieutenant Philip M. Wubalt. Lieutenant Wubalt is a distinguished military graduate from Widener University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Relations. He will enter the Army as an Adjutant General Corps Officer. As a cadet, he attended the Cadet Troop Leader Training at Fort Hood, Texas and earned his air assault wings at Fort Benning, Georgia, and completed the cadet leaders course at Fort Knox, Kentucky. 
During his senior year, he served as the Alpha Company First Sergeant and Cadet Battalion S1 Officer. He will attend the Adjutant General Basic Officer Leader Course at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, followed by an assignment with the 17th Field Artillery Brigade, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. Lieutenant Wubalt had his rank pinned on by his father, Sergeant First Class Retired Martin Wubalt and Mother Mary Wubalt. Lieutenant Wubalt will now receive his first salute from Sergeant First Class Retired Martin Wubalt. Congratulations, Lieutenant Wubalt. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of John D. Anden, Peter G. Arend, Beverly A. Cleary, Michael C. Collins, Jr., Lloyd A. Flores, Kevin J. Hamilton, Jeffrey B. Heilman, Christopher J. Herbert, Michael Nicholas Killian, Angelique Matutz, Colleen E. Perrin, Jonathan R. Shavor, John M. Sinclair, Tamisha L. Taylor, Brian T. Whitehouse, and Philip M. Wubolt. They are therefore appointed to the grade of Second Lieutenant in the United States Army, effective 15 May 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, the newly commissioned class of 2016. Please be seated. Second Lieutenant Michael Collins and Cadet Alexander McCarthy will now be presented with a commissioning saber. The saber is awarded to a senior who has demonstrated the highest attributes of scholastic achievement, leadership excellence, and overall superior performance, leading to the selection as the cadet battalion commander. Second Lieutenant Collins served as battalion commander in the fall semester, and Cadet McCarthy, who will graduate and commission in December, served as the battalion commander this spring semester. Lieutenant Collins and Cadet McCarthy will receive the saber from Mr. David McNulty, Esquire, PMC Class of 1963. We're almost there, folks. Uh, stay warm. Listen fast. I'll try to accommodate to uh, Lieutenant Collins and uh, Cadet McCarthy and to all the newest lieutenants of the United States Army today. It is my honor and privilege to be asked to participate in this service. It's a deeply moving and sentimental time for me, for this is my 53rd anniversary of being commissioned right behind Old Main on the parade field on June 2nd of 1963. Pennsylvania Military College was then the second oldest military school in the nation. It is the 53rd anniversary of uh, Lieutenant uh, uh, Tulelli, who's president of the Board of Trustees, uh, my classmate. And I come to you as a voice from the past, bringing you a message of insight and truth for your future. This goes to all of the lieutenants. It is the same message that we received as incoming cadets at PMC in 1959. This timeless message is, as General Crawford indicated, that character counts. It counted then, and it counts today more than ever. Dr. Wallman's predecessor from generations past, Colonel Hyatt, coined an epigram of truth for all young cadets at this institution. It's part of the wisdom literature of PMC and Widener that has stood the test of time and the devolution of our modern mores. His proverb was as follows, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, 
something is lost. But when character is lost, all is lost. In the opening line of our PMC alma mater, we sang, beneath the dome of PMC, the men in gray march by. The banners of our loyalty held ever bright and high. Though weary years have called us forth from home to foreign sod, the truths you taught shall hold us fast to country and to God. Weary years have indeed called me and my classmates forth from home to foreign sod. And yes, the truths we were taught under this dome, as symbolized by the sabers we're about to present, have indeed held us fast to country and to God. Two of my classmates paid the ultimate price for the preservation of these truths by their combat service in Vietnam. On the plaque behind all the young lieutenants, you will find their names listed. John Lance Gagan, affectionately known as Jack, and William James Stevenson, affectionately known as Buddy. My friend Jack was the top cadet and president of our class. He was the brigade commander. He was a young man of character and integrity, one of the most distinguished military students in the entire nation in 1963. I just heard on Friday that he has been nominated to the ROTC Hall of Fame. Like you, all of you, Jack was the recipient of this saber 51 years ago in an historic ceremony behind Old Main, retired president and former five-star general Dwight David Eisenhower reviewed the Pennsylvania Military College Corps of Cadets prior to our commissioning. In return, Jack Gagan presented another ceremonial saber to President Eisenhower, and we, the Corps of Cadets, were saluted and blessed by the Supreme Allied Commander of World War II and the President of the United States, a man who put the phrase, one nation under God, into our Pledge of Allegiance. Today, as acclaimed leaders of the Dauntless Battalion, you are the continu continuing heirs and benefactors of that salute and blessing by General Eisenhower. By my presentation of this saber, I link you all back in time to that historic event in May of 1963. Two years later, Jack would be killed in the Battle of the Adrang Valley in Vietnam. Jack's heroic story is portrayed in the Mel Gibson movie, We Were Soldiers. Jack's death was like his life, virtuous and noble. He received the Silver Star for gallantry in action, trying to save the life of one of his wounded troopers who's on the Vietnam Wall beside his name. It is with a sacred honor and cherished memory of Jack and Buddy from my class, Captain Nathan Rowdenbush from the class of 05 killed in Iraq, and on behalf of all the members, living and deceased, of the long gray line of Pennsylvania Military College and the Dauntless Battalion, that this saber shall be passed on to each of you. There's one caveat, however. The saber comes heavy with responsibility and symbolism. The good news is that it's lightened by the heartfelt prayers of your loved ones and all the members of the Cadet Corps that have preceded you. Receiving this saber is much like unto the anointing of a knight. On behalf of all of your fellow officers, you are being sanctified, set apart for a noble and decent purpose. General Eisenhower told us, history does not long entrust the care of freedom to the weak or the timid. In Saving Private Ryan, Captain John Miller, as he lay dying, whispered into the ear of Private James Ryan, James, earn it, earn it. In World War I, in Flanders Field, Dr. John McRae passed the torch to a new generation saying, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Abraham Lincoln spoke of the mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart all over this broad land. On behalf of all those who have gone before, Jack, Buddy, and Nathan, and all those yet to be commissioned, I charge you to earn it. Do not break faith with us. 
Do not break those mystic cords of memory. I charge each of you to be a person of firm character, a lieutenant of unshakable ethic, an officer of unmatched integrity. General Washington said when we assume the soldier, we do not lay aside the citizen. You are to be a leader beyond reproach, a servant of inexhaustible patience and grace, a patriot aglow with zeal and passion for your country and constitution, and a model citizen and an alumnus of the highest virtue and nobility. As fate would have it today, I'm about the same age as President Eisenhower was when he presented the Sabre in 1963. President Eisenhower said, God speed you, except for the inescapable obstacle of 50 plus years difference in our ages, I'd be proud to follow where you will lead. I say the same thing, except for the inescapable obstacle imposed by the impediment of 50 years plus in our ages, I too would be proud to follow wherever you and all of your fellow cadets will lead. God speed you all and keep you in his care. The commanders will now prepare to sheath the core saber. This event is a long-standing tradition carried on from the early days of military colleges. The cadet first captain would sheath the saber to signal the end of the academic year. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for a moment of silent reflection and remain standing for the playing of the Army song. seats until the stage party is recessed. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Ignatovic, the entire Dauntless Battalion, thank you for joining us today in this very special occasion. Immediately following the ceremony, we will be hosting a reception across the street at the University Center Atrium. Please join us and take pictures and congratulate the new commissionees. Thank you. <laughs> 